Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhere Baga, and today I'll be showing you one of the interesting chess games. And it started off uh, with d4. Uh, I always prefer playing d4 uh, more than e4 because uh, d4 is something which is more logical. Now, why is it so? Because it's the first move in your game and the piece which you are taking out is being defended by your queen as well. Uh, so you don't have to be bothered about if something counter attack like knight comes out onto c6. You don't have to be bothered about defending this pawn. It's already defended. Uh, so d4 and uh, common response to d4 is d5. Trying to make sure that uh, if suppose knight would have been played, I can gain more space in the center. Uh, so not allowing me to do so and playing d5. And here I went with bishop g5. Now I have been trying to exploit this line uh, further. I used to de develop my bishop onto f4, typical London setup. But uh, bishop to g5 is more effective these days, especially for me. Uh, the idea is not to let your opponent play e6 because uh, once the opponent plays e6, opponent will develop the bishop, eventually get the knight out and then castle on the king side. That's a standard practice which almost every uh, player follows. And I don't want that to happen so easily. So that's why bishop g5 pinning this pawn so that you, it's tough to move this pawn ahead, uh, which responds, uh, which uh, makes sure that an opponent has to respond with something else and tries to clear out the queen side space. Maybe then eventually castling on the queen side is the plan. So bishop f5 by opponent. And I went with e3. Again, a solid move. Just trying to stabilize my center. Nothing too fancy. Opponent plays f6. Now, I have repeated this earlier as well. f6 or f5 is always weakening of the f7 square. Nothing more than that. You have opened this diagonal as well for a check in the future. Uh, and as soon as that is played, I just get my bishop back on h4. Now, even if g5 is played, it's actually mad because, see, the engine evaluation also says that white is ahead now because you have already weakened this diagonal too much. I can simply get back and my bishop will eye the other diagonal as well towards c7. So if opponent tries to castle on the queen side as well, my dark square bishop, which is generally not a right piece when you're playing as white, will be active throughout. So that's why uh, g5, who players who expand from the king side, thinking that, okay, they can trap the bishop. Bishop is never going to be trapped like that. After I come back, even if you play uh, a move like uh, h5 in hopes that you can trap my bishop, that's not going to happen. I can respond with h4. And now you are left with a more likely choice of either expanding the pawn further or taking on the pawn, which again is bad because I'll take back with the bishop. So uh, this setup is very nice. Bishop to uh, uh, g5 is always helpful. Open responds with f6. I get back onto h4. Now pawn to e6 my opponent. Trying to clear up space for the dark square bishop. Trying to develop it next. Uh, I went with bishop d3. Uh, asking questions to the opponent. You, what do you want to do with this bishop? Light square bishop. You want to go back. You want to take. Because I'm not letting you stand here and pressurize my queen side. So knight comes out onto e7, which defends the bishop as well. And now if I trade, that's bad because knight suddenly comes out with further tempo attacking my bishop. Yes, bishop can go back. Uh, and then my opponent can push h5 as well because uh, my bishop can be hunted down with the knight as well. Uh, but if that happens, I open up the h file. So that can be tricky as well. Instead, you can push your pawns and try to uh, trap my bishop now. Uh, that I have already get, gotten back onto g3. And if I then uh, say a move like this and I try to defend uh, now with uh, h3, opponent can take and this would spoil my uh, structure on the king side. Now, castling would be not that great. Uh, unlike if my pawn was on f2, now I have also weakened the f2 square. So that can happen. Instead, now. Uh, I played knight to uh, f3, not capturing the bishop. And then opponent develops the knight to uh, c6. And then I played c3, just a solid move, trying to consolidate the center. Open plays queen d7, maybe preparing to castle now on the queen side. And that's why I just played bishop to g3, uh, hoping that now I have control towards the queen side. Uh, my opponent delays castling and tries to pin my knight. 
I tried to kick that by playing a sing h3. Opponent goes back uh, with the bishop. And now I connect both my knights so that I don't have to take with the queen. Uh, and then I can simply move in my queen somewhere. Uh, otherwise, my pawn structure gets spoiled if my knight is not defended with the queen. So now knight is uh, both the knights are connected, which is always good. And now upon plays bishop g6, I get my queen onto c2, pressurizing again. Now upon plays uh, knight f5, hitting my bishop. So I decided to take on uh, the knight with the bishop. Open takes back, and I now play e4. Now e4, I thought is a better move because after open takes, I can take back with the knight. But I forgot that it would be a pin to my queen as well. Then I cannot move my knight. But open didn't see that coming and plays uh, places bishop over to g6. Here I went with knight h4, attacking the bishop, and open takes the pawn, uh, which was bad. Open should have saved the bishop here, uh, but takes the pawn and I took on the bishop first and then the center pawn as well with the knight. Now again, I can take this with the queen, but if I take with the queen, I am I most likely would be meeting this with pawn onto uh, f5, which is defending the pawn on g6. I wanted to target that uh, so that now after I take took with the knight, I have some discoveries coming after I move the knight away. I have this pawn lined up as well with the queen. So that was the idea. Open plays bishop d6, which is more so in my favor because now I can take the uh, bishop with the knight. The dark square bishop is an important piece for black pieces. And so I took it with my knight. Uh, open has to take here. And open cannot take with the queen because my bishop is also defending there. So open takes with the pawn and then finally g6 follows. Uh, so that's was the that was what was the plan was and it worked out so queen takes on g6 now and open has to move the king opponent moves king to f8 and now i castle as well on the king side this looks pretty solid uh, i am 1.6 ahead have got the extra pawn uh, and should be comfortable from here uh, if i play normal chess open tries to attack me uh, with the rook which i got back now queen to g4 Pinning this pawn, I don't want any pawn breaks to happen immediately. So, pinning the pawn temporarily, opponent moves king to f7 with the idea of getting um, the rook lined up in the h file. King uh, rook to h8 is the idea. I went with bishop f4, hitting the rook first, and now rook comes to g6, which makes me move my queen to h5, pinning this uh, rook against the king. Now, if you move the king, you will lose the rook, and you cannot get the rook onto the h file as well. So opponent plays a knight e7, defending this rook so that he can probably move the king backwards. But then again, it's as soon as you move backwards, you are restricting your rook coming on to h5. So this is pretty tricky and close situation for my opponent. Uh, not ready to the opponent is not able to maneuver his pieces on the on the right squares. Uh, and then I got my rook on to e1, trying to centralize my rook. Open plays pawn forward. And I took, opponent takes back, and then I get my bishop back onto g3. Now, bishop g3 uh, is also preventing any uh, sacrifices which might would have come. Uh, even if I remove the queen, then opponent can. If I say I remove my queen from here, offering queen exchange, opponent could have taken on the pawn because I cannot take back. My king is pinned if my bishop is not here. So this is tricky. That's why I got my bishop back on g3. Trying to play safe because I am up uh, by a pawn in the game already. Now, <clears throat> queen comes on to f5. And now again, I can trade queens here uh, or I can get my queen back. I decided to trade. Uh, reason being, opponent will still have a chance in the game if the opponent is left with the queen. But I can eliminate that little chance of the comeback uh, by the opponent if I trade off the queens. And that's what I did. I took the queen, opponent takes back with the knight, and then I took control of the open file, rook to d1. Uh, opponent gets, uh, also rook d1 was threatening uh, a move like rook to d8 and then capturing a pawn. So opponent went with king e6. Uh, here I played uh, king to h2 so that I can take back with the pawn and the king, both pieces are supporting my bishop now if opponent is willing to take with the knight. Uh, of course, rook takes bishop is something which opponent would not play. But knight takes bishop can be played. And in that case, I can simply take and 
this is solid structure and my king is safe behind it. I can play with my rooks and take control of the remaining pawns from the opponent. So king h2 there, opponent tries to get his rook onto c8. And now I try to double up the rooks on the d file, rook d3. Opponent plays rook c6. I double up on the d file. And then opponent tries to exploit some weakness here, which was never going to happen unless he had more pieces. Maybe he was trying to push the pawns for, for, uh, further. Uh, I went with rook to d7. Now I have to be careful here as well because I cannot take the pawn. Knight is defending it. Uh, and only pawn I can take is b7. So a move like rook to b6 is perfect for the opponent, which saves the pawn and also attacks mine. Uh, but opponent plays pawn forward b6, which is weakening. And I took the pawn. And then opponent goes back with the rook, trying to do I don't know what. And I got my rook back here. Uh, opponent plays g5. And then I get my rook back because I, my rook was not doing much over there as well. And open can disconnect my rooks by placing the knight as well. So why to waste my piece there? I got it back. Open plays pawn forward. And here I just centralize my rook to e1. Open gets the rook onto c4, trying to defend the pawn as well. Uh, and I played h4. Now h4 was a choice because now if, if the opponent tries to take with the knight, I can take here. Open takes back. And I can simply go up or down dependent on where I am comfortable with. And there's no problems with either, I would say. I don't think, oh, sorry for that uh, cursor slip. Yeah, even if I think opponent takes here uh, and I take back, opponent takes. Even if I go down, I don't think it's it should be a problem. Yeah, it's not a problem. 1.3 still in favor of white. Because your king is safe, you don't need to be worried about anything else. Uh, your rooks are pretty good. You have a majority of pawns on the uh, queen side. So that's good enough advantage. Uh, so I played h4 and then my opponent played uh, rook to uh, a8. And then I went with a3, just trying to safeguard my pawn. Opponent goes back with the rook again, uh, trying to defend the pawn further, uh, which was not required, I would say. I played f3, making sure that opponent has to take here or I will take back and then I'm attacking the knight as well. So opponent took uh, and I take back with the pawn. Now opponent tries to pressurize my bishop. Uh, with a couple of pieces and it's defended only once and i played uh f4 here tricky move because it defends as well uh, so i like the move here uh open plays rook c4 and i took on the pawn trying to pressurize the center opponent takes with the knight and i took the pawn first so right move again grab extra pawns whenever you can that's what i did here i can take on the rook uh, and then rook rooks will be traded most likely or open can take my pawn as well on on to h4 but before that, I can take on this pawn because it comes with a check as well. And opponent moves back and I take the knight with the rook. Opponent takes uh, the pawn on h4. Uh, and I just saved my king here. Opponent can trade the rooks, but that's not right because I'm already uh, three pawns uh, on, the king, uh, on the queen side against one. So a lot of majority is here. And opponent needs to take these pawns out of the game if uh, the opponent needs to survive this one. So rook comes to h8. Now the idea is simple. Get the rook here. And once I move the king, you can grab one of the pawns, which is the base of the other two. And then one will another one will fall shortly. I saw that coming and placed my king onto f3. Opponent places rook onto h6, uh, trying to take the pawn next with a check. Uh, and I tried to double up here. I didn't I let that pawn go because it's okay. After opponent takes, I just slide back uh, and then opponent goes there. And then I exchange the rooks. Simple. Exchange the pieces. That's what I did here. And then opponent goes up. I give a check. Grab another pawn. King tries to run and enter the space there. But I place rook onto b4. Cutting off this king from the fourth rank. Also defending b2 simultaneously. So not an issue. And then we just maneuver our kings. Uh, open tries to defend the rook there, then tries to go up, and then he ran out of time eventually. Uh, it was a clear victory from here. Uh, all the pawns are solid. A rook is there. I can just place my rook behind the pawn and proceed. I can go ahead with my king as well. So this is completely willing. You can develop, uh, promote one of these pawns to queen if required, or you can just mate with a rook and king. Uh, and that is completely winning from here. So uh, played very tactically strong, I, I would say. Uh, was there, there was no chance uh, given to the opponent throughout this game. 
uh, apart from like minus 1.1, 1.4 is the, what Open got. And if you see the position was completely controlled throughout. Uh, solid gameplay, I would say. Uh, and that's what you need in chess when you are playing uh, Blitz or any other format. Just play solid chess. Don't don't hope that Open misses out on something, but uh, play something better and solid, which uh, doesn't give an opponent to, uh, a chance to come back in the game as well. So exchanging the queens was important. I could have let that go. Uh, but uh, if I let the queens go, uh, opponent will always have a chance to come back in the game. And why to give the opponent that chance of coming back? So trade off the queens when you are ahead and take it easy from there. I hope you like the video. Do let me know your feedback. Keep watching and sharing. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already by now. And I shall see you tomorrow again with some instructive and interesting content. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.